I got Paul Langmack one day with a uh, anchor rub on his undies. I'd like to give a big shout out to the Hoodoo Gurus who have given us permission to use part of their song, That's My Team, as our new podcast episode intro for all of their music. And whenever they are going live or performing live, head to their Facebook and their Instagram. The links will be in the description below. Be sure to give them a like and a follow as well on Facebook and Instagram. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Final Tackle Podcast. And... Welcome to Western Suburbs Week, where we have got a guest each day of this week who has played for the mighty Western Suburbs Magpies. Our first guest is Josh White, who played for them in 1993 and 1994. Um, Thank you very much for joining us, and what are you up to today, mate? Mate, just another day working away. Uh, Yeah, just uh, that's what you do when you finish football. Yep. No, that's fair. That's fair. Um, so obviously, let's get stuck into it. What the listeners want to hear is your time at Western Suburbs. Um, what was it like getting your first grade debut and all that jazz for Western Suburbs and your grassroots? And who did you play for in your junior days? Well, growing up, I played at Fairfield Patrician Brothers. Um, and then I got signed at Canterbury by the great and late Peter Moore. He oh, wow. was at a school game. Yep. And um, went from there. I spent three good years at the Bulldogs. And uh, from there, I ducked across over to Western Suburbs with uh, when Warren Ryan and all the, you know, Cement Gillespie, Joey Thomas, Andrew Farrell, all them guys sort of went across. Uh, yeah, I, my brother and I decided to go with them, and yeah, we ended up at Western Suburbs, and I spent five years there. Wow, that's amazing. And obviously, a little tidbit about your brother to anyone who doesn't know. Um, Kyle is, you can say, for lack of a better term, a bit of a nomad. Um uh, you know, going off the grid and all that. Um, have you heard from him and how he is going at the moment? No, I, I've heard from him for a while and he's, uh, yeah, he's gone missing a bit again. So um, hopefully he'll pop his head up soon and, and get back in touch. But um, yeah, he comes and goes. Uh, he's his own man. And um, yeah, just hopefully he's all right and he's um, in control of his life again. Yeah, well, I mean, Kyle, if you are listening, because I do know you listen to this podcast every, most every now and then, um, if you do listen to this episode, Kyle, please try your best and at least let Josh know that you're all right. <laughs> Even just a, Hey, I'm all right, mate. And then if you dip out again, that's fine. Just let him know that, that you're all right. That'd be great. Um, now, sorry, back to your time with Western the suburbs. You spent five years there. What was it like? Oh, it was fantastic. It was, how can you say it? It was just like a real mates club. Like we all got on. Um, we didn't have the best of facilities. We didn't have the best of everything actually. So we made do of what we had and um, we had a really good time and on and off the field. And, you know, they're mates for life. We've, but, you know, all the blokes I played with the Western Suburbs I'm still in touch with, which is fantastic. Um, and I run the I run, run the Western Suburbs Old Boys Facebook page. Did you start up the page or did you take over from someone who started it up? Page after, you know, um, especially now we're getting older um, and there's no more Western Suburbs. So we're sort of like the last generation to really... Yeah, to but, really be Wests. Yeah, so I started that up just to you know, get boys to the reunions and you know, stay in touch with blokes. And especially, you know, sometimes you don't know when players are going bad or you know things have gone you know, mishap in their lives. So we, hopefully we can reach out and see blokes and you know touch base with people that are doing a bit tough. So I started that page up and it's been really good. Um, we're all in touch. Um, yeah, so it was, it, was, it was a good stepping stone after we finished. And then, yeah. you know, Boys all talk every time, and I put everything up and tell them when we've got things happening, and yeah, it's been good. No, that's awesome. Um, and when is the next reunion? Because um, I'm sure, obviously, this year's one has unfortunately been postponed or cancelled due to COVID. Yeah, no, we've got one coming up on the 19th of September at the oh. Homebook. Yeah, we're at the game, um, which will be good. We're um, all meeting up in the captain's lounge, I think it is, and just try to get as many people as there as we can within yep. the cap- rules and regulations so hopefully as many players get there and we have a bit of fun that night as well yeah no that should be that should be honestly really really bloody good um talking a bit about the time since the merger what was your opinions because you were retired by then um on the merger of western suburbs and balmain tigers and how do you feel about it now um it's hard to say it was was a bit disappointing that we went down that path just knowing the fact that you know, West was such a growing area in Campbelltown and out the back there. Now, if you go out the back of Campbelltown, it's amazing. It's, you know, we when we played there, it was like you'd go out the back and it'd be, you know, 
parklands and bushes and now it's like housing developments. I think West could have stood on their own, but you, know, you look back in hindsight and you know, they could have, but who knows, it was the same down Laura Steelers. Steelers. You know, we all thought Illawarra's got a great community and great mm. vibe, but they've moved to St George. So um, I don't hate the, the merger, but you know, it's just not the same. You don't yeah. follow... I don't follow West Tigers just for the fact is it's you know more a bow main thing as well. So um, yeah, and I think a lot of players are the same. Mm. We'd love West Magpies back, but yeah, I don't think it's ever going to happen. No, that's fair. Um, I was going to say I was talking to a, a person who's a big fan of Western Suburbs and devout as in doesn't really watch the NRL, but they said that when they do, when the West Tigers win, it's Magpies, and when they lose, it's bow main <laughs> in their oh. in their opinion. I've seen a few of the fanatics pages, and you know some really good people from Western Suburbs are on them pages, and they're, they're still, you know, there's a lot of uh, disharmony there. You can say mm. uh, they don't really follow the West Mag, uh, the West Tigers, but yeah, if they lose, they're, they're Balmain, and if they win, they're the West Magpies. So. Yep. Still, it's ongoing, and I don't think it's going to cease anytime soon. Now nah, that's fair enough. And speaking of your days with, um, with Western Suburbs, who was the person that you got along the best? Or the most like who was like you could say your club best friend because everyone has that you know that Betsy that they always room with when they go on away games and stuff like that. Yeah, well, it started probably in the twenty ones. I was really good mates with Russell Hill, Evan Cochran, uh, Justin Maloney, Steve Kearney, Siri, Cher, um, Cherry Mesher, Jason Benj, all them guys. We sort of come through together. Yep. And then um, when I moved in the first grade and around the big boys, it was you know. Um, uh, Darian Doherty, Justin Dooley, Craig Menkins, uh, Mark Affleck. Uh, yeah, was, Darren Brown was there for a while. He was a great bloke. Yep. I know a Tom come across. You know, it was funny. It's sort of like a club where we rotated a lot of players. So you never yep. really got really good mates with anyone because they'd leave. Yep. Uh, Chrissy Williams was another guy I had a really good friendship with and Damian Kennedy. Um, all them guys. I just, you know, I could name everyone. So we're just yep. a fan of blokes. And we, as I said, we, we played really well. Played really tough footy. That we um, we partied, I think, too much. Which, train, uh, train hard, play hard, party hard. <laughs> remember, Jubert told me one day years ago. He said, "Always train hard, play hard, and party hard." He said, "But never ever get them mixed up." He said, yeah. "When you do, go backwards." And yeah. I think if you're from the Western Suburbs, um, I think yeah, we uh, we got it mixed up. Fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, and speaking of partying, obviously there would have been some pranks in the locker rooms and all that during your days at Western Suburbs. What's one that stands out in your memory? Um, probably I cut the undies of a couple of blokes. And then when they'd go to change, their, they'd put their undies on and there'd be sort of nothing there to hold them in. <laughs> I got Paul Langmack one day with a... Oh. Uh, Anchor rub on his undies. Oh, oh. <laughs> I got to the end of the freeway, Langers has pulled over. And then as I drove past, I bit the horn and waved, and he was absolutely filled. And, and uh, wouldn't talk to me for about a week and a half, but uh, we got over that pretty quick. So, oh, yeah. Mate, that's a, that's a good one, the Danker rub in the undies. <laughs> Frank, uh, we, uh, we had some fun out there. Nah, far out. That's honestly so good. Um, and obviously... Um, talking about the current NRL, as you said, you don't follow the West Tigers. Do you have a team, or do you just watch the sport in general for the love of league? Yeah, I just watch the sport for the love of league, really. I've got a soft spot for Parramatta. I've got a few uncles that played there back in the day. Um, but, yeah, not really. I don't follow any team particular. Um, but, yeah, it's good to it. And I think this year it's really got me back involved to watch it, the way the, um, the Landys has turned it around. Oh, that, hasn't he just? That's amazing. The game's just great to watch. I used to sit there and be on my phone, have a look yep. up, and try, and you know, not really. I, 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 yeah, I even switched to watching Super League over the last few years because it was much faster paced than the NRL. Definitely not the quality, but much faster paced. And then as soon as Volandis brought in this, you know, the six again and all that, it's just next level. It's almost like it's reminiscent, minus the shoulder tar- shoulder shoulder charge of early two thousands rugby league. You yeah. Know? Oh, I, mate, I've really enjoyed this year, and hopefully they can stick with it next year. I really like the one ref yeah. rule because two refs can wreck a game. They've got different opinions on how they run you know, the game. So the one ref, I can't see why they can't do it. They're doing a good job as it is, so hopefully they stick with that. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Um, now going to some sort of fun questions. What's your current beer of choice at the moment? Uh, Iron Jack. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I haven't had a taste of that. Is it any good? 
Yeah, it's beautiful. It's just nice. It's not. It's not too heavy. It doesn't give you a hangover. It's just. It's just good. And uh, my wife continually tells me that I, um, yeah, I'd, I, I shouldn't drink much anymore because I've had a fair, fair go back in the day when we played. So I don't drink as much as I used to. That's fair. That's fair. Um, how do you like your steak cooked? Medium well. Yeah. Okay. Medium well. I thought you were going to say medium rare there, but no, medium regardless, uh, medium is good. Um, if you could have a superpower, what would it be and why? To be invisible. Yeah, no, that's fair. I'd love to be a, like a fly on the wall in a room where you know people are talking about you. That'd be. Oh, I'd love to have it when I play because you could be in the selection meeting and listen to the coaches talking about who's they're going to pick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it'd be good to be invisible, I think. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, oh, what was I going to say? There's a superpower. Um, oh, we've got a question from one of our sponsors, Sky Spark Electrical. They ask, what advice would you give to your young teenage self? with what you know now to go through life? Well, I coach an under-16 side so and I continually talk to them guys about you know, the ways to do things now compared to what we used to do. And you know, I'd continue to tell them, you know, to say myself, follow your goals, set goals, train hard and <laughs> stay off social media. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> fair. That's fair. Um, just trying to think. If there's any other topics, um, your time at the Illawarra Steelers and obviously the Bulldogs, which, believe it or not, I went onto the Rugby League project to get as much info as I could, and they don't even have you playing for the Bulldogs listed. So I'm yeah, very sorry about that. Um, what was it like playing for the Bulldogs and playing for the Illawarra Steelers? And out of all the clubs you played for, what were the differences in the atmosphere at each club? Yeah, I think um, the Bulldogs was great because I was only I was only seventeen when I signed there, so it was like new. I was like a kid in the lolly shop, uh, yeah. eyes wide open, and um, and you know back in the day, I remember one day I mucked around a training and Terry Lamb gave me a backhander on the back of the head and told me to pull my head. And and I was only saying to a bloke the other day, if you did that now, these young blokes would go and get a release and go to another club because you're not allowed to pick on them. Yeah, which I, you know, it's pretty ridiculous, but you know. Back then, they just come off the 88 grand final. So I was there in 89, and you know, there was Andrew Farrell, um, Cement, Joey Thomas, all these superstars. Jason Outchin's a really good mate of mine. Um, and it was a great it was a great learning experience for me. Um, and it sort of set my, you know, the way they trained too was pretty good to watch them and sort of set my tone of what I was going to do in football. Um, and then, as I said, went to West. And then Illawarra was just, yeah, it was great. It was the, it was the Super League year. I spent a year down there before I went over to England, and yeah, you know, had some got some really good mates, and I'm back living in Wollongong now, and still see them all. Like Sean Timmons, Dave Rialo is a really good mate of mine. Mary Wishart, they're all you know we're all down here. So um, yeah, and it's, it was a great club. I wanted to stay. I tried to stay, but um, because of the Super League era, I wasn't allowed to. I had to um, go. I, I begged Bobby Millwood for me to stay, but he said he couldn't get me out of the Super League contract. Um, but yeah, eventually I got back down here and I'm here now. I've been here for the last five years. Oh wow, nice. Um, and speaking of your time in the Super League, what was it like over there in England? Oh, that was another level. As you said, it's a lot faster over there. The pace was different. There wasn't as much wrestling and tackling, which was good. Um, we went to Broncos. We come second that year. Uh, again, against all odds, we a bunch of Aussie blokes went over and um, yeah, we. We hung in and we played some really decent football, and then we signed Martin the Fire and Sean Edwards, two superstars of the game over there. And we had some, you know, great players. Terry Madison was our captain. Peter Gill, Tony Mestroff, Matty Dunford, uh, Greg. So we had a great side. Um, we just couldn't beat Bradford that year. They were just too good. Matty Elliott coached them, and yeah, we uh, we had some fun times over there as well. You know, that was we sort of got the era of the uh, full time training. So we're training every day. Um, really enjoyed. Yeah, you know, been over there. It was good. You know, travelled the world virtually. We went to Italy and well, you now all the England, Scotland, Wales, France went everywhere. So, oh, wow. it was a, yeah, it's really good. You know, just just some uh, final few topics um, of your time in the NRL or NSWRL and the Super League and all that. What would be your personal highlight looking back? Uh, probably two highlights. We mm -hmm. won the grand final in '92 at Western Suburbs. Um, and with a, again, we were the underdogs. We played a team, St George, who had Gordon Tallis, Nathan Brown, oh, Jade, Brendan. Pitt. Yeah, they they were just we yeah you know, we were just a bunch of uh, Westies that went out there and just had a go. Um, and yeah, we beat them 15-14 in the grand final. And still to this day, we're having reunions every 
couple of years just to catch up with all the boys. But, um, and it was a, I think it was the last grand, the last trophy West Club has ever won. Wow. Uh, and probably my first grade debut running on against Brisbane Broncos. Uh, oh, yep. In Brisbane. And they had our, Broncos, did you get the win? No chance. Ah. They, they're like a state of origin side. You know, they had Alfie, Kevy, Renouf, Wendell Taylor, Lazarus. Yep. Yep, everyone. <laughs> It was surreal going out there. I said to someone the other week, um, it was like I wanted to get their autographs. When we're I was going to say, like, of if any of any club, if you don't make the debut for the Broncos, it's a uh, back then you wanted to debut against the Broncos sort of thing. Oh, yeah, so it was good. It was up there. I think it was fifty-two thousand people there. So it was a oh, wow. Um, yeah, and it was a great experience for me to you know, have that as my first ever game. Um, and then after that, you know, we ended up. Amber, which ended up playing against one of my idols, Ricky Stewart, who uh, sledged me for 80 minutes, and I learned a lot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so was, was he yeah. a good sledger? Oh, the best, the best you've ever seen. Wouldn't give you a time of day. Used to pinch the ball off you at the scrum, push you in the face, <laughs> get under your skin. Um, so yeah, so that, yeah, all those highlights back then were fantastic. No, that's awesome. Um, and one last question: um, during your time in the NRL and the Super League, which club? was the most physically and mentally challenging for you to go up against personally? Uh, there was two. I think in Australia it was um, the Broncos by far. Mm-hmm. Busy because they were strong. Well, that they, decade in the 90s, yeah. They were just, they were electric and they yeah, they were state of origin players from 1 to 13, so it was very hard to play against them. And probably in England was um, Bradford Bulls who were coached by Matty Elliott, and they were just a fantastic side. And, you know, I feel sorry for the players there that don't get to play at Oddsall Stadium. It was the... used to hold the record for 103,000 people. Oh, and wow. it's it's like in a volcano when you drive in. It's just another another <laughs> level. And the atmosphere there was electric back then, and the people, they, their supporters were just another world. Um, yeah, so probably those two. The, the, Bron- and the, uh, the Broncos and the Bulls. No, that's fair. <laughs> that Mm. So, um, honestly, that's really all I've got um, listed down and typed up to talk about. Um, is there anything that you'd like to say to the Western Suburbs faithful before we leave? Oh, no, I just, they, yeah, I see a lot of them and I, you know, I've got friends on Facebook that are still Western Suburbs fanatics. Um, Scott Morris and Joe Camilleri, all them guys, they're still holding the flag up high for us and they're just great people and they always have been. You know, Western Suburbs, well, you know, the Silver Tails and Fibros, we were the Fibros back then. And I think we uh, still to this day, if I could turn back time, I'd do it all again out there. No, that's fair. Do you think, sorry, actually, that brings up a really good question. Do you think that if you had your time over, you would p- play your whole career at Western Suburbs if you oh, were given the chance? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, I, I didn't really want to leave in the first place when that Super Bowl broke out. But, but I mean, even before like the Bulldogs, if you were given the chance to start at West, yeah. you would have. Yeah, 100%. I, you know, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. We had a great time. And as I said, I've got mates for life out there. And um, we still talk to this day. And I just wish we could you know, turn back time and do it all again, but do it better and you know, hopefully try to win comps instead of uh, trying to win parties. Now, that's fair enough. And as I said, um, that's literally it. Uh-